20 years of International Space Station. One of the privileges that we have while well, living on orbit is to make the ordinary extraordinary. Even at dinner becomes a chance to go beyond any limitations and any heritage. I remember one dinner where we had my crewmate, uh, Jessica Mir of, uh, uh, of Jewish Heritage, um, enjoying Russian and Italian food together with the Russian colleagues, Americans, and Hazar al Mansuri, who is the first United Arab Emirates astronaut. Uh, there are no limitations to what we can do when we want to do extraordinary things. Maybe the challenge for the next 20 years is let's do extraordinary things also on the ground. Hey, I'm ESA astronaut Alexander Gerst, and what you see behind me here are the training mock ups for the International Space Station at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. And believe me, I've spent a lot of time in these mock-ups and actually I've spent even more time on the real International Space Station about one year. Uh, what might seem long to you is actually only 1 20th of the inhabited lifetime of ISS. That means if you're 40 years old or younger, more than half of your life a human has lived on the ISS uh, at any time. That's an amazing achievement. So if I could think of one property of this fantastic machine that I could pick out, then I would say the ISS is the most improbable machine that humanity has ever built. We all know uh, there's a lot of science going on and it's very important for us down here on Earth to get those science data, but we rarely look at what an achievement it was to actually build that machine. The modules, such as the ones that you see behind me, were actually built on four different continents and were launched individually on rockets into orbit at 28,000 kilometers an hour, where they have been put together. And they had to fit with a precision more than a hundredth of a millimeter together, but they've never been tested on Earth if they fit together. That's how sure engineers were that this machine would work. That's what an achievement it was to put this machine together in space and working together across the globe. So you see from this fantastic achievement that international cooperation is the key. If you uh, try to do things alone, you can only get so far. If you work together with other countries, you can achieve things that one nation could never achieve alone. Plus, it forces you to work together in peace. So that's an achievement alone that I think is already worth the celebration of today. Happy birthday, ISS. So hey, as you know, uh, this year we celebrate 20 years of continuous human presence on the ISS, which is an unbelievable achievement. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of the last 10 years uh, of that story, that ongoing story. And to me, what's so special about the ISS uh, is its truly international nature, the international nature of that program. You got people from all over the globe working with the same ideals of space exploration, research, peaceful cooperation, and that makes it, to me, truly unique and special. So uh, congratulations of all the ISS partners on uh, 20 years of success on board the ISS, and here's to uh, an even better future of exploring farther together. Hello, I'm Tim Peake, and it's incredible to think that this year we're celebrating 20 years of International Space Station occupation. To my mind, the most incredible feat of human engineering the size of a football pitch, over 400 tons of hardware in low Earth orbit. But it was built as a scientific laboratory, and for that time it's been doing valuable research for the benefit of everybody back on Earth, such as investigations into new drugs, sustainable technology, solar power, renewables, crop growth and water regeneration. But more than that, it's about international collaboration. It couldn't be done by one nation alone, and it just goes to show what we can do when we work together. I had the privilege of living and working on the space station for six months, and it was the most incredible time of my life. I hope that many other astronauts in the future get that opportunity too. So good luck, whatever the future may hold. November 2nd is a special day, not just because it's my birthday, but also because this year it's the 20th anniversary of the first crew to move on board the International Space Station. 20 years later, the International Space Station is still providing us with uh, exciting new knowledge and new technology. Uh, I'll never forget my visit to the space station in 2015, 
One of the highlights was uh, sitting in Cupola, our window module, and filming uh, blue jets, uh, which are gigantic lightning strikes that shoot upwards, uh, out towards space from the top of thunderclouds. And this is a, an excellent example of new knowledge. Um, this is the first time blue jets were filmed and already it's given us uh, more insight into thunderstorms and how they impact uh, climate and weather on Earth. So here's to another 20 years of uh, living and working on board the space station in low Earth orbit. Hello, I'm Andre Kuipers, astronaut of the European Space Agency, and I went to the International Space Station twice, in 2004 and in 2012. When I birthed the first Dragon to the International Space Station, I realized I was doing something special. Here I was, a Dutch astronaut from a European Space Agency, working with a Canadian robotic arm, talking an American commercial spacecraft to an International Space Station. A beautiful example of all these technologies and countries came together. Also, when I docked the European ATV to the Russian side, working together with my Russian colleague. That is the most important thing for me for the International Space Station. It's built by all kinds of countries that were fighting each other, not so long ago in hot and cold wars, and now building on the biggest technological project there is. A beautiful example how you can cooperate. For me, the International Space Station is a beautiful candidate for a Nobel Peace Prize. Welcome to the European Astronaut Center here in Cologne. The home base where more than 20 years now we are training astronauts for the International Space Station. So congratulations to all the partners that have made this wonderful project possible. For more than 20 years now, we have humans living and working in space. And I was one of the lucky ones. I have been there twice. On my second mission, I was there for six months and we are here in a mock-up of the Columbus module where I have spent six months doing science and working and living in space. Of course, we did not only work, we also had memorable moments. For example, when we celebrated Halloween on orbit and when we tried to dress up and try to find uh, things that we could do just to surprise each other. These are also memorable moments, of course. But the most important thing is that for 20 years now, we have been delivering science, technology for the benefit of humankind. So again, the International Space Station, congratulations. Hi, my name is Christe Fuglesang. I was an ESA astronaut and I'm a professor now at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. And I'm here to say a few words about the fantastic International Space Station, who's now almost 20 years been continuously uh, crewed. I was actually part of the very first crew when they launched and went to the International Space Station in the year 2000. I was a support astronaut at the uh, Moscow uh, Mission Control Center, ZUP, and I followed the, the Soyuz flight from launch to the docking to International Space Station, 1st of November, the year 2000, very closely. Some years later, in uh, December 2006, I got a wonderful opportunity to visit the International Space Station myself. And I took part in the assembly of the International Space Station. And then again in, the 2000, uh, in 2009, two missions SS-116 and 128. And it was absolutely fabulous to be part of doing this, to be part of building this most fabulous construction humans has built. Uh, I was happy and lucky to be able to do a few spacewalks and, and seeing the Earth floating below, in this case was 360 kilometers below, while outside on the space station, that's an uh, absolutely unforgettable experience. We're building this International Space Station to learn how to build and live in space, but also to learn what we need to know to go further in space. And I'm sure ISS will be used many more years as well. And right now I wanna congratulate everybody who has been involved in this fabulous endeavor to build and construct 
and live on the International Space Station. 20 years, that's a long time. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Reinhold Ewald. As a European astronaut, I had the chance to fly to the Mir space station back in 1997. With that experience, I joined the teams on the ground preparing for the International Space Station. We were all set when in February 2008, Columbus lifted into orbit. And now Columbus is an integral part of the International Space Station. Good luck to all the astronauts, to the teams on the ground. Good journey and have a safe landing always. For me, these uh, 20 years uh, are more than just a, a point in history. For me, it's an um, experience. For me, it's a special personal experience of what was happening the last 20 years. And if you allow me, there are two main aspects which I followed and which were very significant for me. One was the situation uh, when um, the Columbus module, the European Columbus module, was docked to the station. That was in 2008. Um, this was for me a very special moment. Uh, I was in, uh, in the US at uh, Cape Canaveral following first the launch and then, of course, following also the procedure to dock the um, Columbus module. And the other thing was in 2014, which was for me even more impressive. And I'm still, when I give a talk about space, I always use that example. In 2014, there was a Crimea conflict between Ukraine and Russia. And everybody on Earth was talking about the sanctions vis-a-vis -vis Russia, etc., etc. And I got an invitation to go to a launch to um, Baikonur to send a European astronaut into space, to the International Space Station. And I came to Baikonur. I saw this, uh, two astronauts and one cosmonaut. So it was Reed Wiseman from NASA. It was Maxim Surayev from the Russians. And uh, it was a European astronaut with a German passport, uh, Alexander Gerst. And they were sitting together as if there is nothing, no no sanctions, nothing. And they flew to the station and without any visa problem, they can move, could move between the Russian and the American sector. And this was for me the feeling, yes, there is still some hope for the future that we can work together. So the ISS is for me really a, a symbol of what can be done by humanity. And the International Space Station is really a shining example of how we can create a sustainable program. And we do it with international partnerships. And, and here we are 20 years, celebrating 20 years of keeping life off the Earth on the International Space Station. I think it's an amazing achievement.